Hello, this video is designed to guide you through the data confirmation process inside of ARIES Parent Portal. First thing you need to do is navigate to the pittsburgh.k12.ca.us webpage. From there, click on Community and ARIES Parent Portal. If you already have an account, you can go directly to the login below. If you do not have an account, there are some video instructions and download, downloadable instructions to guide you through the process. From the Aries Parent Portal, you plug in your email address. And this is the email address that you use to create the account and then you type in the password that you created and click sign in. <clears throat> when your student comes up, it will prompt you that you have not completed the student data confirmation process and that you need to click here to confirm. You also get a little box down below on the right hand side that says there is a newer version that's coming and if you would like to try it, you can click on the try it to see what the new version looks like. We're going to go ahead and go through the process in the current version of Aries. So I'm going to click there to start to confirm information about my student. The first question it asks is if you have at least one parent or guardian that is active in the United States military. So once again, it's a parent or guardian, not just someone that lives in the household, but the parent or guardian of the student. If you do, select yes. If you don't, select no. Then we have some questions about housing and the resident survey and select whichever option applies to you. Once you've made your choices, click Confirm and Continue. The next screen gives some basic information about addresses and phone numbers. If you need to make an address change, while you can plug in the information, the information will not be saved, but an email will be sent to the school site. The school site can make the change or they may contact you for more information. Please make sure that we have updated phone numbers. To update your phone number, you simply hit the change button. And once the screen changes, you can update the address information, update the phone number, update your student's phone number, the correspondence language. And if there's any change to your education level, you can make that change here. We also have a records release. If you would not like directory information of your student released to outside agencies, you can choose that there. Once you're done making your changes, you hit the Save button. It tells you here that no data was changed. If some data was changed, you would get a different message. Click Confirm and Continue to go on to the next section. This is where we have our contact information. We want to update the names, addresses, emails, any information about student contacts. If you notice that there are there's a contact that is already here, please don't add that contact again. Just update their information. If you notice that there are multiple contacts of the same person, all you need to do is on the person you need to remove or the extra contact, click the little pencil to edit it. And once the edit screen opens up, then you can click the delete button. Once you've updated your contacts, you want to hit confirm and continue. The next section deals with our medical information. As it says, if the student has no health conditions, please select no medical conditions to report. If there is already information there, that's information that's been reported prior for the student. If the condition no longer applies, you can choose that button. If there are additional ones you want to add, you would select it. 
It automatically gives an effective date of the day you're selecting this. You can update the age, the grade, and type in a comment. You can select as many as you need to. And once you're done, you can hit the Save button. And it will add that condition to the student's record. Once you're done, click Confirm and Continue. Next is the Documents areas. So there are some documents that are required. And it says that along the right hand side, if it is a document that is required, you have to click on it to read the information. So right here, the parent visitors form, I'm going to click on that, it will open up in a new window, I can leave that open to read later, or I can go ahead and read through it at this given time. We have the housing questionnaire, which is a fillable document, and we will need you to fill that out and then upload that a little bit later in the process. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the pesticide use. If I want information about the pesticides that are being used, I can fill that form out and turn it into the school site. There is our student acceptable use agreement that deals with internet and computer usage. And then we have the handbook acknowledgement form of the handbook that's posted on our website. So here we have the housing questionnaire. And as mentioned, it's a fillable form. So I'm going to go ahead and type in some information. And you can select the options below that are needed. And if you have any additional children living with you, you can go ahead and plug in that information. Now, from the computer that I am on, it will allow me to download or save this form. So I can click the little button and it brings up some information for me to select. And I'm going to put that in my downloads folder and just call it housing questionnaire. If you know your student's ID number, you can add that to it or put in the student name. The preference would be to put the ID number behind or in front of that particular questionnaire. So I saved that there so I can reference it at a later time. So I'm coming back to the student documents. I went ahead and confirmed all the ones that were required, and I'm going to click Confirm and Continue. Here we have our authorizations page, so you can allow or deny certain authorizations. You want to save those. and click Confirm and Continue. Next, we have our proof of residency. So you will need to upload a current copy of your utility bill. If you have an online account with your utility agency, you can log in and then download a most recent copy of the bill. Once you have that file downloaded, you can find it wherever you may have stored it. I have a PG&E bill that I have saved, and so I'm going to go ahead and grab that and select it, and it says it's done, that it's uploaded, and I just talked about the housing questionnaire. So I downloaded that after I filled it out, and that comes up at the top for me, so I'm going to go ahead and select that 
and it says that that's done. So I've uploaded my proof of residency and I've uploaded my housing comp and my housing questionnaire. And I'm going ahead and click confirm and continue. Now at this point, if there is something that you might want to go back and double check, here's where you can do that. If you want to double check an authorization or double check a contact or student information, you can do that. If there is nothing else that you want to double check and everything looks good, go ahead and click finish and submit. Thank you for confirming the student data and the system. And there is some information about free and reduced lunch meal applications. And that is it for the process. <laughs>